a summer visit to Summerlees this week. It's our first time back here since March the 10th, and the air is filled with the clamour of nesting black-headed gulls, and on the floating pontoon there are chicks. We've settled in the rotary hide at the moment, just filming what comes by, like this male tufted duck, and little brown birds flit among the reeds and bushes. I think they're young reed buntings. The trees and bushes surrounding the rotary hive are a hive of activity as a small flock of long-tailed tit fly in and they afford me the rare pleasure of actually getting them in frame before flying off. There's a lot of young birds outside the hive, like these young great tit. And here's a juvenile dunnock. A lot of the youngsters are coming to perch on the handrail that leads to the hide before heading off into the bushes to feed. And this young dunnock is now fending for itself. There's also a recently fledged blue tit around too. And here's a welcome visitor to the handrail, a wren. A bird that twitches and birders describe as an LBJ or a little brown job, but I think they're fantastic little birds, tiny little things but spirited and feisty. And yes they are brown, but closer inspection of the plumage reveals intricate patterns and shades, and the distinctive little tail held high. And then their loud, shrill, piercing song, so powerful for such a tiny bird, it's really nice to get a clear shot like this, because they can be quite secretive. And here we have a pair of wren, they probably have family nearby. Excellent. It's a day of sunshine and showers today. The surrounding foliage is bathed in sunlight, but there's also raindrops falling. We move on to the pioneer hide that overlooks the scrape. The light is changing all the time. The sun comes out for a while, but then is obscured by scudding clouds. A mallard brings her small brood of three or four ducklings to feed by the edge of the reeds and in front of us a coot forages. But more interestingly, looking further out onto the scrape, we have lapwing chicks seemingly on their own, but the parent birds are not too far away. A little egret has just flown in and is hunting by the edge of the water. And that looks like quite a big fish. I can't tell what the species is, maybe a roach or something like that. The fish struggles a few times as down it goes in one. The little egret's diet is mainly made up of fish, amphibians and aquatic insects. And off it goes to continue patrolling the edge of the water, looking for more prey. Something has suddenly sent the black-headed gulls into the air. And here's the culprit. A grey heron has flown onto the scrape and as you can see is being unmercifully dive bombed by the gulls. The gulls won't tolerate a grey heron nearby and will do their best to drive it off. The grey herons will quite happily take black-headed gull chicks or eggs. We're enjoying excellent views of common tern fishing just in front of us here in the Pioneer Hide. They're real masters of the air, swooping and diving and swerving above the water, looking for small fish. They're nicknamed the Sea Swallow and can hover almost as well as a kestrel and can be seen in the UK between April and September. And here's the reason the heron was being mobbed on the island. We have more black-headed gold chicks. As the rabbits come out for a mid-morning feed, we decide to move on to the Paul Britton hide, and on the way we're serenaded by this beautiful male blackbird. We reach the Paul Britton hide and agree that the day has a really fine feel to it, with abundant nature to enjoy and film. From here we have better views of the lapwing with their iridescent plumage. No large flocks here today, but a few scattered here and there. And here's a much better view of a lapwing chick. Lapwing chicks can forage for themselves very soon after hatching. Here's another chick. This is a red shank chick. And these youngsters can forage for themselves pretty quickly after hatching too. And here's the parent bird breeding. I think there's two pairs of lapwing adults out there both with two chicks each. Here's another of the adult birds. This one only has one leg 
Wading birds will often stand on one leg with the other tucked up in the feathers, but this definitely has only one leg. They're constantly making a little cheeping sound, which tells the chicks that they're nearby and that it's safe to continue foraging. But at the sign of any danger, they'll sound the alarm call and the chicks will run for cover. Also out on the scrape, we have a little ring plover, distinguishable from the ring plover by the bright yellow ring around the eye, and also ring plovers are slightly larger with an orange bill. Suddenly, the red shank alarm call is heard and the chicks run for cover. Something obviously spooked the bird, maybe a bird of prey overhead or some other perceived predator. But whatever it was, the danger now seems to have passed and the adult bird reverts to the safety call and the chicks come out to forage once again. I've certainly filmed plenty of adult red shank before, but I can't remember if I've filmed uh, red shank chicks before. If I have, it's certainly been a long time ago. And here's another youngster. It's a pied wagtail. You'll often find pied wagtail close to water, and you can see them making their way along the water line, foraging. And it looks like there's rain blowing up. Torn grey clouds obscure the sun, but there's blue sky on view too, so hopefully it'll only be a shower. So far this year it's been a really wet summer, and here's yet more rain. For the last couple of weeks or so it's rained every day, days of more prolonged rain some days of just showers. Thankfully this was just a shower and the scrape is once again bathed in sunlight shining down on this common turn. But it's been an excellent day here at Summerlees and as the turn leaves it's time for us to leave too and I'll leave you with a last look at this beautiful red shank chick. We'll see you next time.